The issue screen has several sections. It is composed of an information section and a transaction section. In the information section, you have the member and item barcode field, the member name and address details, where you can see the name, member category, sex, address details, date of birth, and the home library branch. You can see how many members you treated already today, and you can see how many um, items you treated with one special member. And in the grid underneath, you would see all the items that a member has on loan in the moment. You would see all his reservation and his holds, if this is applicable. And then there is a, an, uh, a section for outstanding fines, where you can always see the sum of the, the amount plus the charge description. The transaction section gives you information about the member you're dealing with, all warnings are listed, and when you enter an item barcode for issuing this, this item, then the transaction will be listed underneath as well. So this guarantees that if you are disturbed during the issuing process, you can always see what has happened already and what your last transaction was. After finishing all issues for one member, you can either click the End button or if you have receipt printers, press Function key 12 to start the slip printing. Instead of using the End button, you could also use the End key on your keyboard. If we browse through the menu on the issue screen, we see that this is full of Function keys and this is has been done to make uh, issuing process very very quick and to save your staff from using the mouse too often during the issuing and returns process. Let's maybe look onto an account where more things happened already. As I said you can also call up members by using their name key, search in the grid and double click or use the F7 button if you like. We see that the borrower has reserved items on hold, so this is a remembrance for us that uh, we have to pick up some books for him. He has outstanding fees and fines, and he also has overdue books, so we can talk to him when, while he's standing in front of us. And this is the note that comes from the member record, which gives us some information like last time he's forgotten something in the library, please give it back, or please make him talk to the director, or whatever this will be. So what do we see in detail? In the transaction section, we see the member information, and we see the information about his holes. It, he has four holes, and... Um, after that, the four titles are listed, so we're well informed which books we have to pick up from the hold shelf, and the same four items are listed underneath. We see the, the call number, we see the barcode, the title. Yes, they are on hold. They have been put on hold on, and this is the RSN, this is the record serial number, this is the catalog number that comes out of the liberal catalog. Underneath the holes we see the warnings, and this is the warning about the outstanding fines that are listed here on the right. We see the amount and we see the description. This is 3450 overdue charges. This is five-year annual charges. This is for copies. This is other outstanding fines. This is for lost media. In the grid underneath we see the holds, then we, we see the reservations. Reservation means the library member asked to get a book which is on loan in the moment and is not yet back and is not yet in the pickup shelf for him. And then we see the actual issues for this member. We see the call number, barcode, title reference, the status, if it is on loan, if it has been renewed, if it is overdue, we see the due dates and the RSNs one again. The first thing we would probably do now is hand out the items that are on hold for the member to the member 
and issue the barcodes. Hmm. This is a home library member and the system reminds us that the item has already been borrowed to that member on April 10th, 2007 and it leaves the decision up to us if we want to borrow this book again or if we don't. In this case we do. If we refresh the member account by double clicking in the address field of course all the warnings and everything else will pop up again but in the grid underneath we see that there are only two items on hold in the moment because I have not issued them yet and that the items that are issued already are due on September 29th 2007 and we see that this item has been reserved by another member already and that there is a total reserve queue of one person for this item. So how do we now get these dates or these finds? At this point it's time to have another look at the Libra parameters, this time to the circulation and membership parameters. There's one menu for the membership parameters in Libra and one menu for the circulation parameters. Let's start with the members. We start with the member category codes. If we click on the member category, we can see that we can set all sorts of things for this member category already on the screen. There's a lot of things that we can just click on or off for a category. Let's say we can enable um, borrowing and reservation history or we can't enable it. We can allow automatic renewals for instance or we can charge extra fees for re-registration of a person that belongs to this member group. Options that we can set for maximum number of loans and permanent loans, maximum number of reserves, uh, we can set reserve costs and um, expiry days for web OPAC reservations that the member has done via um, self-service functionalities. We can um, say that the member of this category has to wait a certain number of days before he can renew an item of a special group. We can set lots of fees already on the parameter screen. We can set borrowing fee, reservation fee, reservation available fee, membership fee, OPAC print charges, um, fines outstanding, uh, maximum for these fines and we could always parameterize against which fine category the um, fines that we take in would be calculated. It's in the library's interest that the um, address data of the member records are always quite up to date and therefore we can set a re-registration date and this time it's one year but this could be any period of your preference. We could also allow or deny the issuing or the um, reservation of special media type or special collections for a member group. We will now have a look onto the circulation parameters. We change and we look onto the loan periods and maximum for normal loans. There's also a short loan facility within Libero that allows you to parameterize short loans on the basis of hours or minutes, including overnight loans and weekend loans with the appropriate fines if a member does not return the stuff, but we'll look at the normal loans in the moment. 